Uh, next, I'd like to take five minutes to ask a few questions, uh, Director Dettelbach. Um, are you familiar with Operation Fearless from a decade ago? I'm sorry. I'm Operation sorry. Fearless from a decade ago, are you familiar with that? I, I don't know that I'm familiar with the details of that particular operation. It, I, if you start talking about it, maybe I'll be reminded of the, the name, but not as I sit here. So the largest uh, state newspaper in Wisconsin wrote about it, suggested a lack of planning and oversight in regards to uh, trying to get people um, who were running drugs, running guns, stuff like that. I take it you're not familiar with that. I, again, by name, I'm... Uh, if you could, was it a, was this uh, related to uh, a certain type of investigative technique? It might, it, I might know it not by the name, but by the, but by the facts as you say them. Yeah, so it happened in Milwaukee, and they found out later after the investigative story was put out by the journal Sentinel in Milwaukee that this is actually being done in five other cities also. And um, are these type of operations still going on uh, again, around the country? No, I, not knowing the type, or what type of operation, if you tell me the, just in general, I can. Um, so failed operation, Operation Fearless, um, is an ATF violent crime impact team opened a storefront in Milwaukee neighborhood. A storefront. Okay. Yep. Um, so with respect to, and I, I do remember some of the public reporting on, on the storefront issues. So. So I'm, I'm not going to comment on any ongoing under operation that ATF may be or may not be undertaking, but I can, I'm glad to talk about that, which is, look, when we do at, in law enforcement, are there, we do, let, let me, are there operations like that? I, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to reveal whether any law enforcement ongoing pending operation is occurring now or not. Okay. Thank you. That would endanger people uh, in the field and we can't do that. Um, because it was a failed operation and it was shown that it was being done around the country by the ATF, ATF and, um, which was really a serious problem. And we would like to know if things like that are going on. Well, yet. So, no, but I understand. With respect to storefronts generally, I think there, there, there was public reporting and there were some issues with the way that storefront operation was conducted. ATF did, I believe, I wasn't there, but my understanding is from the U.S. Attorney's community, my knowledge there was that ATF did impose additional restrictions and change the way those operations were, were going to, to try and better run them. If you'd provide that data, that'd be terrific. I think um, in that, if I remember correctly. If you would. So the, pro I'm sorry. Um, is it a, pro I take it it's a priority um, at ATF to review FFL violations. Is that correct? Um, it, it's a priority at ATF to focus on violent crime and to try to get shooters and to stop the supply of unlawful firearms to those most violent people. That is a priority at ATF. Do you agree with um, the Biden administration's zero tolerance policy that they've enacted in regards to um, FFLs? Uh, we implement the Enforced and in Regulatory Enhancement Initiative, uh, which people call different things, and I think we're referring to the same thing, which focuses on a, a, a limited number of willful violations um, and so uh, Congress has said that that's what we should is, be focusing on. Is, well, that's what the Biden administration said. It was an executive order. Congress order. said that willful violations are the only kind that can result in revocation. So um, the number of revoked FFLs are up significantly, correct, in 2022? Uh, I believe that there were 90-some that were uh, as a result of this particular enforcement. Has it reduced crime? Um, uh, <laughs> The, co the congressman was talking about this before. There are lots of causes of gun crime, and it's impossible to say that any one of them is going to be the silver bullet. But that, to me, doesn't mean you don't work on all of them if, to try and address the issue. Sure. Um, so as we talk about these um, FFLs, um, do you have regular training for your employees in regards to how to review these um, FFLs? Regular training. I'm sorry, I just had, yes, we have regular training for our employees at ATF. Yes, we do, Congressman. And are there violations for violating these firearms transaction records? Are there? Are there, are, are there penalties for violations? Uh, there, if an, oh, FFL, if an FFL is in violation, there's a series of different actions at different levels that the statute allows ATF to take. And also firearm uh, transaction records, right? Like if. Like a 4473? Yeah, or? if they inaccurately fill that out or if they lie on it, there's penalties, Well, the, right? the person who's, who's buying the weapon fills out many parts of the 4473, and if that person who's buying the weapon uh, doesn't tell the truth on those forms, there are, there are serious penalties for lying on that form. If they violate, should they be prosecuted? 
Yes, sir. That's no. up to U.S. attorney's offices to determine. We investigate cases, refer to them to U.S. refer them to U.S. attorney's offices, and they make those determinations. So, if someone violates, regardless of who they are in society, they're turned over to um, uh, to a district attorney and to be charged. If 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 ATF investigates a matter and believes that there's been a violation, it would be referred to the appropriate prosecutor. Should the president's son be turned over since he violated Form Four Four Seven Three? I think that's been publicly reported that that is an ongoing investigation. Again, I am not going to comment on any ongoing investigation. So you don't take a position on we should have equal justice, we should not have a two-tier system of justice? Uh, I'm, I'm not able to comment on any ongoing investigation, whether it's the, the, the undercover operations that you referred to or any particular case. I just can't comment under longstanding Department of Justice policy, under both parties' administrations on pending investigative matters. I've exceeded my time um, and yield that time and would recognize the gentlewoman from Georgia, Ms. 